Are you comfy? I think I'm comfy. We yes. begin. Shall we begin? Shall we begin? Hi, hi everyone. Welcome back to another Strangely Us podcast with myself, Mark, and Wendy and Henry. And Henry and Vamp is over by the uh, by the door. It's very hot. We're all a bit hot. So a bit hot, things we? we do for our craft. I know exactly. exactly. We're like you know. Well, I mean, it's, it's bad enough that we're hot stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Even, yeah, even with the hot weather. That's it. Are we going, Henry? Henry's, Henry's going. Over the Henry's place. going on the floor. Good, good point, good. little just man. Mind, just mind the mind the old microphone, love. Um, so yeah. So today, what are we talking about today, Wendy? Today we have quite an interesting yeah. topic. Today we're talking about. Da, da, da. Oh, you hit the microphone. Sorry, little friend. We're talking about. What inspires us mm-hmm. what inspires and who us? inspires us? Yeah, that's a very, very good point. I thought yeah. everyone in their life has got yeah. somebody who they either look up to <laughs> or stop licking. Stop washing us. We don't need a wash. We're all right. I, I've, I had a shower had last a wash? week. <laughs> um, oh, yeah, my, on my Monday musings on my YouTube yeah, channel. Yeah, how did that go? Yeah, right. But, but people like, I said to them, yeah, I, I, don't, I shower every other day. I don't shower. All right, in this hot weather, maybe every Is it day. today you showered? Uh, <laughs> Should I be saying this quote? Well, I don't smell. <laughs> I honestly don't smell. But I like a little bit, don't you, Henry? I like a little bit of El Naturel. Elder Mark. Yeah, Elder Mark. Yeah. Um, so, thank you, Henry. So, yeah, um, who inspires us? I yeah. want to start with you, Wendy, because you probably... This sounds a bit, a bit condescending, but you sound like <laughs> the person who's probably going to be more the person who's inspired by someone than I am, or, or people you look up to. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'll start the ball rolling in your court. Um, well, I'll probably start with who inspires me. Okay. And I think you go through your life and you, I mean, for me personally, I can only speak for me, but who inspires me throughout my life? Mm-hmm. Um, and I suppose the first one is, is my mum. Yep. Cool. Because she's, no matter what life has thrown at her, she just keeps going and she's always got your back. Mm-hmm. And I've watched that woman go from, from highs to lows and She's really, really inspired me as a as a person and as a as a woman. And sadly, I couldn't have children. But if I had, I wish I could have been as half as good as Mum as she was. Mm-hmm. So I think it's you know a lot of people, our relationships with our parents is is where we stem all our relationships pretty much from. Will right. you stop watching Mark? Thank you. So still, still recording? Yes, we are. <laughs> yes. Pack it in. No. Stop this tomfoolery. Yes, behave or I shall put you out. Um, so I think, yeah, so it's definitely my mum. She's She's been a real inspiration to me. And she, you know, I think also different generations see things differently, differently but she was went through the Very war true. Yeah. and everything. And when she tells me about, you know, the doodle bug and how they used to, you know, hear the noise of it and throw themselves down on the floor... And put the hand over. They didn't know whether they were going to be alive or dead no. after well, it finished. The Anderson Children's exactly. And, all that, yeah. and so, I don't have no idea. No, you're guys. <laughs> I'm being licked, ladies and gentlemen. I'm being Pack licked. it in, and no, he tastes nice. For the best of the boys. He's not showered today. Oh, the people are going. Oh, he hasn't showered. Ugh. I can honestly oils. say he smells. He smells fine. He smells good. Um, pack it in. No more. Thank you very much. Just don't, just leave him. <laughs> just don't touch him. Um, so yeah, because you think about that time of their life, I, I don't even know how many of us today would cope with hearing that noise and having to drop to especially the... this woke generation. Exactly. And she, you know, she says to me that she was walking down Wallington High Street, and she was with my my grandmother, and they saw two ladies on the opposite side. They heard the noise. They dropped to their feet, and when they when they came, you know, when it was over, mm-hmm. they were obviously under some rubble, and and the two ladies had gone. They'd been blown to smith- smithereens. Oh. And so I, she inspires me that she's still what is she now in her mature eighties, but she's amazing. So very much so, my mum has been a great inspiration to me. It's funny you say about the first. war because my mum never was never frightened by the war. Yeah. You know, and this to go walk to work, to school yeah. after a bombing raid. You know, imagine that now. Well, my health gra- and safety. My granddad apparently used to keep three tablets at home because uh, don't ask me yeah. how he got on. But if the, what, if, cyanide if, if that yes, if the, if we'd been invaded, um, and my mum was terrified of that draw in, in the dining room because you know it would have been it would have been awful. So I think that that. To, to go through all that, to be a tremendous mum, she's always had my back. But even when times are hard, she finds a joy of tea, yeah. fun, 
and and that's so she's one of my first mentors and inspiration. We've got a snorry dog here, everyone. No, we, he's just being. Are you being Henry? Where's your biscuit? <laughs> You're going to get like loads of like. That's it. Yeah. Um, oh. Just don't touch him. Yeah. Well, don't touch him. Don't Seriously, touch, don't touch don't him. Don't touch me. I'm showered. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Just don't touch yes. him and he won't do it. It's interesting to say that. I don't have sort of personal... <laughs> don't licking me, darling. Back it in. <laughs> little sausage. Um, but yeah, I don't have anyone sort of family-wise. Yeah. My dad died when I was very young, um, although I'm adopted. But mm. uh, yeah, so I don't have anyone in my fam- family-wise. I mean... My mum, yeah, I look after my elderly mum, mm. and she's been great. She is, she is a little bit of an inspiration because she's got, she's so positive and everything, even um, in, in her current situation. Heart, yeah, yeah. Uh, but she's very much an independent yeah. lady. But yeah, oh. I've never been one for sort of pe- people personally that I know mm. that I've looked up to or inspired. But pe- some people in the public domain I have mm-hmm. who've inspired me. I don't look up to anyone. And that sounds, I'm not being arrogant, I don't find it bizarre, I don't look up to anyone, but, but people can inspire no. me. I mean, that's, it doesn't matter whether you look up to them or they inspire you, they've made it, they've had an impact on you in yeah. some ways. Yeah, Right? A- absolutely, absolutely. Um, um, this is why they say never work with animals and children, you yeah. know. Pack Henry, it in. Henry, Henry. No, you'll go out. You're doing it for the viewers, aren't you? You're doing it for the viewers. I'm going to have to get that squishy thing in a minute. That squishy thing? Yeah. Um, the the water pistol. Oh right, yeah. No, no. Come on, come on. We're doing <laughs> Do you think you can cope without me for half a minute while I go and get it? Go and get your. Go and get your. Uh, I'll go, go and get, get the. I'll be right back. How about this dead air? So sorry about it, ladies Don't and gentlemen. Don't live. Yeah. Um. So yes. Uh, oh, Wendy, you've gone. Um. So we're just going to get a squishy thing because Henry is getting really carried away, aren't you, darling? Yes. Thank you. Um. So thank you very much. Oh, by the way, thank you very much for all your comments on the last couple of podcasts. They've been really, really interesting to read. Uh. Very, very grateful. Uh. For people doing that. You know. So here we go. Oh, it's <laughs> oh! You have it. What do I do? Just, and you can what just, do you... I'm just getting my leg over, love. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna get a few comments, darling. Right. Oh, look, see, he knows. He knows. Yeah, he there knows. we go. Peace has, right. peace has resumed. Oh, you're going right, cool. You go up there. Um, <laughs> sorry about that, folks. This is a podcast. Um, we are trying to be professional. It's just what is it? Strangely us. Strange. It is strangely us. And raw. And, and and Henry is strange. And we've got. Vamped over there. So, like, who, which person has inspired you? Um, it's more, a lot of it is in the paranormal field. Mm. Well, I say the paranormal field or metaphysics. Mm. Um, a gentleman called Hamish Miller, who reintroduced dowsing, really, as a, as a popular pastime, because I do a lot of dowsing, especially recently, I'm getting back into it. Is that it what again. you're doing then, yeah. Rods? Yeah, well, that's what I'm doing with those rods. <laughs> but Hamish Miller wrote a great book uh, called The Sun and the Serpent, where he rediscovered an ancient um, earth energy current going across from Cornwall up to the Norfolk coast called this, um, the Michael and Mary current. A stretch of, it's also a stretch of ley lines. The ley lines are a straight alignment, alignment of uh, sacred or ancient sites, mm. which I'm, I'm a bit sceptical of half the time because I think they're a little bit drawn out and people can make, make what they want of them. But in, be, in between all these sacred sites is this interweaving energy current, you know, which we, I was doubting this mm-hmm. the other day um, uh, over in uh, deepest Surrey. And what that is really means is electromagnetic current, loads of them that go around, go around the planet, and you can detect them by dowsing. Because most people say dowsing, you think, oh, water divining. Yeah. You know, which you can do. Of course, you can find lost keys of it. But I like doing earth energy currents. Um, but he inspired me, and he got me, he inspired me not only to sort of pick up, take up dowsing, it's about 1991 probably. He's no longer with me, he died a couple of few, about 10 years ago. Um, but it inspired me. To, what, my, 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 my. Oh. <laughs> Mind the wine, darling. Mind the wine. Uh, but it inspired me to get out in the field, especially in the paranormal world. Yeah. We started, from that on, there's a knock-on effect. We started doing crop circle research and all mm. that kind of thing in the early '90s, and then that led on to ghosts and spirits and all that kind of thing. So, oh, you, oh, you're up. Oh, it's finally, is it? finally, you, you stay there. Like, there's peace in the house. Yeah. Um, so Hamish Miller was a huge, huge impact. Mm. Huge impact. That's why you get your rods out now, isn't it? That's why I get my rods out. I've had those same rods for 27 years. I did, I did years. see you the other day with your rods out, did actually. You? I did. It was quite you know, entertaining. Oh, I was you. in the bath at the time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> those I remember back for one of our little clips. Wendy watches my videos when she's in the bath. I do. Yeah, which is very nice. You're my, as I said, my, my dirty little secret. The dirty little secret. It's me talking about an old church or something. And I'm like, oh, he's got oh. his rods out. 
this lovely old porch in this church. This is a I'll Norman just, church. I'm just going to fill this door. Shall I leave you two alone? Yeah. Um, uh, oh, you mean me and the old doors? So yeah, Hamish Miller. Um, he he. Back okay. in the day, he was the one that sort of set me off. See, on, I on don't a know that gentleman. No, no. He's not, I would say dramatically well known. Yeah. Um, but. But Such I do nice do guy. dowsing, but I use the pendulum. Yeah, same thing. When, when, same I, thing. when, I, when I do the dowsing. Um, someone who else for me was Anne Boleyn. Really? Yeah. Good, strong woman. Anne Boleyn. Um, and she remains my favourite queen. Well, I mean, Elizabeth and Henry were great. You know, it's, it's, it's Anne Boleyn because, you know, so much is written that's not true about her. Yes. And she's probably the most verified woman in English history sometimes, you know. Um and really, you know, I was I was quite shocked with all the different um, films that have been made of her, out of her, and even the recent one on oh, TV oh, where time. they had um, a gorgeous uh, a black lady playing her as well, which was quite interesting, diff- completely but different why, take on it. Yeah, but why? I don't. I know. I know. Quite, I know got a lot of complaints because Anne Boleyn is obviously it's a historical figure. Yeah, Anne Boleyn was a historical figure, but. You know, when you read some of her stuff... Yeah, sorry. Hit I it. love it. No, I yeah, can't yeah, stop no, touching you, it. Yeah, but you keep hitting the microphone, love. <laughs> this um, is still recording, I hope. Yes, it is. Yes. It's still recording. Yeah, yeah. I didn't touch it that hard. <laughs> it's just She's that terrible. Um, so, yeah, like, literally, you know, forced to marry Henry VIII. Really didn't want to. I mean, everyone says she did, but she really, really didn't. Um, and But if you had... If you have no choice, women in those days. But I mean, she was so brave to. And she knew she was going to die, and um, you know, she she could have just accepted a large amount of money, and her daughter would have lost her position, and everything. But she didn't. She kept her mouth shut and said, "No, no, no. I'm I'm innocent. I'll go to the grave." So it's it's like she inspires me because of the childhood that she went from, you know, being used as a pawn, as in to bring wealth into her family, to be part of a court that, you know, was there yet again for whatever she can bring. You know, women in those days were not, you know, they weren't, well, they were there just for yeah. lots of not great reasons, mm. right? So she remains one of mine. Also because also how she, even now, you know, she doesn't really have... Even all these years on, people are still doing different stories about her. They're still doing different documentaries. But she has a, a grave in in the Tower of London, you know, in the Tower of London, in um, the chapel. Because at Eva Castle uh, during lockdown, yeah, for a visit, just when everything was starting to reopen again, yeah. um, that was fascinating. You know, her childhood home. And I think it was also what braved me as well is the day that she was used to die. He kept her waiting. So he's like, you're going to go at this time, and then you're going to go at this time, and then it kept getting put back. The the mental torture that oh, must you, have been. Wow, yeah. Like, I'm, I'm ready, I'm ready. And, and then also um, to actually, I think anyone who went to the Scaffolds blog would have I been incredibly great. I mean, I always find I'm going to cycle for it. What a barbarous country we were, we were for hundreds and absolutely. hundreds. And now look at this nanny yeah. state we live in now. And he actually, I mean, Henry VIII did adore her. He adored her. Yeah. If, in fact, he were probably saying she was the love of his life, even though Jane Seymour had the boy. So that made her very special. But he gave up the church, the Catholic church, and split England for his love for Anne Boleyn mm. to have a son with her, to marry her. You don't just do that on, oh, yeah, she'll give me a son. He could get a son from anyone. Yeah. So for me, she's very inspirational. She's a and, and I feel choice. I feel for her because she's still all these years well, later. What's that, what's one? People are still um, not giving her. You know, she hasn't got. I would say completely peace. Yeah, that she was innocent. She wasn't unfaithful. She got accused of witchcraft, and can you imagine how he could have burnt or beheaded her in um, in in the pleasure? Yeah, for the king's pleasure. So you know. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Just got to move this. So, so I'm just walking in flatmate. This is what happens when you go, you know, sort of like. <laughs> no. This would be our best show, yeah. Yeah, exactly. We like a few outtakes. Um, Henry, Henry's just climbing over the. Oh, I think I'll sit here now. They're going to think it's the wine, Mark. Where's that? I finally had to drop. Oh. Cheers. Um, Cheers. So no, you're your next yeah. one. I think Anne Boleyn, I think that, that, that's a really solid, solid one. Yeah. You know, um, but my, mine are more to do with metaphysics, I think. I mean, one person I, f- I follow for about, ever since I saw him on what the bleak do we know documentary, and all that documentary about law mm-hmm. of attraction does have a lot of critics, uh, even though I, I, I have a few questions about it. Um, 
I followed this guy called Dr. Joe Dispenza, um, who is very much you know how you can heal yourself through the power of thought and the yeah. emotions. And his key thing though is always have a, a clear intention and an elevated emotion. If you want to sort of create your reality, it's really the emotion that's the most important Absolutely. thing. Absolutely. And you believing you're living in that moment. Mm-hmm. So that's his incredible meditation, something like forty five minute meditation, which I've done a few of them, and they're really powerful that you can try and try and get my head around this. That you're really deep in thought that when you come out of the meditation you're still in that state of awareness Mm -hmm. so you know very much like if you want to that's why praying let's not do religion i'm just saying praying doesn't work because you're asking for something that hasn't existed but if you practice gratitude thank you which i think i let that might be a whole different podcast and i practice gratitude even though we all get irritable at times Mm -hmm. and the gratitude is saying you're saying thank you to something before it's happened yeah you know, thank you for the healing, gratitude for the healing. And it's really powerful. There's lots of study. He's got a whole scientific team behind him. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's, the results have been incredible. People who've cured themselves from stage four cancer, uh, heart disease, all these kind of people. And people who are probably not healthy or anything, mm. but, but their mind, it's, it's so powerful. And this is the same thing with Dr. Bruce Lipton. They all know each other, these guys, and Greg Braden, that it's the environment that really, really affects your well being and your health, mm. which is epigenetics. Um, so yeah, it's absolutely fascinating—a real emerging science now. Because mm. Joe, what he does, which I really admire, he doesn't—he he talks about sort of tuning in what most people call the chakras. He doesn't call them chakras because he says he doesn't want to divide an audience, which I totally understand. He calls them earth energy centers, which is I call them. Mm. I love the word energy center. Uh, you know, the, your seven energy centers, mm-hmm. and you sort of basically go through a healing meditation. That he does. We just concentrate on each individual part of your body mm. and you feel fantastic afterwards Absolutely yeah just, i mean I, I still call them chakras in it, my it work. doesn't really yeah, it doesn't matter of course yeah. it doesn't no 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 absolutely you know, energy center the energy center yeah, yeah. uh and it, sorry what are you doing you're having a bit of yoga now yeah it's a bit, a bit of yoga, yoga going down a bit of yoga darling it's like i can't get cool i know i know it is hot it is hot it is horrible actually um because you like to, you want the summer and you really want the sun but you don't want it to be really you know Oh, God, I can't cope. And in this country, we tend to get that. I, I love the hot weather, so I'm not complaining whatsoever. Yeah. It's easier to call off. Until you went talk. in my bedroom. <laughs> because then you wouldn't sleep in there, would you? No. So no, it was could... hot. Yeah, it, of course it's hot in my bedroom. Of course it is. You're in there. But it's even hotter now. <laughs> well, because I've been in there. Um, <laughs> because you went out there and you were like, yeah. oh, I can't stay here. By the way, guys, I mentioned some of the last couple of podcasts. I'm going to change the subject a little bit, <laughs> darling. When, the way that Wendy's seat is here... It makes it look like I've got a really big belly, and, and I don't. haven't. I have. I'm really slim, and I can vouch for yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, it, and then some of the other videos, they're like, oh, "Man, look at the size of my waist. What's going on there?" Yeah. But yeah, it's not. It's not. It's just the way the, the seating is. It's not slightly back, isn't it? <laughs> um, so yeah, um, going back, Dr. Joe Dispenza, <laughs> uh, Bruce Lipton, Greg Braden, <clears throat> people like that, Joe Vitale. You know, all these people. Mm. Great job, uh, Bob Proctor, who passed away recently. Yep. Uh, all these people who really promote the... I don't like the law of attraction. I don't like that term. I think law of vibration is a better term. As Nikola Tesla said, the the energy of the universe... Well, it's if the you same def- thing. Yeah, if you want to define the universe, think of energy, frequency, and vibration. That's so true. Everything vibrates. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What about your one? Your next one? Um... Actually, I'm, I'm going to... Well, there's a few, but I, I'm trying to... Uh, what really inspired me as a, as a, when I was younger was two ladies, actually. Mm-hmm. And one was Princess Diana and one was Joan Collins. And you couldn't get as far apart as you wanted. Did you see her recently on um, Piers Morgan? Why I did. you think of Piers Morgan? She goes, what's a, what's a woman to you, Piers? And she goes, what to you, Joan? Goes, I'm a woman, you know. Yeah. And I thought, good, good for you, you know. What I love about Joan is she doesn't give a shit, right? Yeah. And also, she, in the 80s, she really fought to get that one, part yeah, I did. I did. of Alexis. And as a woman, she had to really, you know, she had a lot of... When you watch the documentary, she talks about all the pressure on her, like, you know, like, obviously, the gentleman who was in Blake Carrington, John Forsyth. About the thing about the age thing. Yeah, like, he was really not too impressed. She got more, you know, she was getting more attention. So I think that she's had... And also, she had, obviously, her daughter who was... 
in an accident and obviously sadly got um, injured Mm -hmm. and she had to take care of her. She's a strong woman and I identified with quite a lot of things she's saying, like, you know... um, She still looks fab now. She looks amazing. I mean, uh, when she... I think she... Did she play Cleopatra? She did, didn't she? No, that was um, uh, Elizabeth Taylor. No, there was another one. uh, Another... I'm sure there was something Egyptian she played. To me, she's uh, Edith Keeler at the Star Trek episode... Yeah. City on the edge of forever. To me, she's Alexis Coe, but I, I yeah. for me, Never she's saw in, an episode of Dallas. Uh, sorry, uh, a dynasty ever. She's an inspiration because she didn't give a shit. She actually was like in the show, and she was like bedding this one, that one, and the other, and she still fought. So she was a, quite an inspiration, and I, I, I admired her. And the other one, Princess Diana, no. obviously. Can you tell you a quick John Collins story? She's, yeah. For a great interview, there recently, she pulled up uh, Blake Carrington. What's the chap's name? John Forsyth. John Forsyth. Mm. They're in a war ceremony. And they always called out, or in the press, it's always called out the ladies' ages. Mm. They're in their 40s when they're mm-hmm. doing it, but never the men. No. You know, and so she once said, sort of pointed out mm. John Forsyth's age, yeah. and he got really pissed off with her. I know. Yeah. And she had to fight. I mean, he hate, they didn't get on at all. No. So she said, you know, it was lots of uncomfortable silences. And because, you know, when she did the fights with Crystal... And everybody hated Alexis, but she was the first... I mean, when she did the film, is it The Stud? Yeah, and The Bitch, yeah. And I was like... Great well, movie. They were great movies. Good on you, Jodie. Oliver Tobias. I mean, he's a fine-looking man, Still right? Still is, yeah, yeah. Um, but she she didn't give a damn. Mm. And and so I really inspire for that. And also she's a... You know, her sister wrote some amazing books. And then Joni wrote some, some yeah. books after that. Yeah. And then we move I mean, on... Not really posing on my radar, but yeah, no. yeah. Mm. And then Princess Diana. And I think growing up as a kid... Um, everyone, you know, she was this ide- idyllic princess, which obviously we now realise was completely different. Um, and you see, like, how she blossomed from being, you know, a very young, insecure woman to this beautiful, you know, woman who still had her insecurities and issues, but was strong and, and you know, trying to d- b- change the world with landmines and ultimately paid probably the ultimate price. Yes. Um, oh, that, I saw a... a- Alf Dyer, oh, what's his name? Uh, uh, Mohammed Al Fayed. Fayed, no, the son. Who, Dodie. Dodie. I saw his, because uh, I went to, um, where was it? Oh, God, Limpsfield recently. Um, well, near Limpsfield. Yeah. In sort of the Surrey Kent border, and there's a lovely tribute to him. Yeah. Because uh, the guy who's open, I don't know these names, who's his father? Mohammed. Mohammed, he lives in this in this village yeah. still. And there's a lovely little tribute to him in the church, local yeah. church, to D- uh, Dodie. And I think that, you know, everyone talks about the, the glorified story of her but this was a woman who went to charities with not telling people who went and you know went and sat with people and touched people with aids and and literally like inspired the rest of us to say it's okay you know to not me get anything. that was really a major yeah. step forward yeah when she was actually without well, stigma of aids in the 80s which yeah. we remember um scaremongering again how yeah. relevant is that today yeah. um but she went and said well that's fine yeah, and she held and she held the hand and also she was saying that it doesn't cost anything to give a hug you know it, you know to it doesn't cost anything and she you know hugs release endorphins by the way yeah and such a sad and she had such a in a way she might have had a very privileged life in lots of ways mm. but it was a very sad emotional in a lot of ways life and so for me growing up as a woman as I went through different stages in my life you kind of think you know how alone she must have felt as well because Everyone thinks it must be great, but to be followed everywhere you go, your photograph is everywhere. You don't leave the house looking like crap, you know, or, or you're wondering who's on your phone. And she, I know she. I have a question you know. about that though. Don't marry into royalty well, then, exactly. if you don't want it. So I, I, exactly. I don't really have much sympathy in that kind of thing. You've decided to go down that route, yeah. you know. Well, I think she was kind of, in the end, it was kind of like put in that position. Yeah. But she just remains an inspiration how. You know, with the landmine, with AIDS, you know, how she did so much for charities and how, like, you really felt this was a woman that gave a damn about you. Mm. You know, from the little kid to the eldest, Amazing. to the yeah, eldest totally lady. Yeah. She was, and she she changed the royal family. She changed them to them to go, oh, really? We need to follow that route. And you see it in her, in her son. Are you a royalist? Um, not all of them, no. Not all of them. Yeah, I love history, and I love the the royals in history. Am I a royalist? No. Would I prefer to have a royal family than a prime minister or president? Absolutely, I would. I, I totally agree with you. Because if you got rid of the royal family, you're you're asking for trouble yeah. then. So they are very much needed, and also they're part of our history. However, having said that, I like the way that William and Catherine and those other you know are coming up. 
Um, but I think Diana's legacy is that she showed us, not just us, but the royal family, um, a way to go. So, yeah, she's, she's, you know, those two ladies were an inspiration to me. Right, okay, very interesting, very interesting. And you? Uh, I mean, I'm, what, am I a royalist? No, no as I've said the same after yeah. as you, you know, we've had a chance of being a prime minister and a, and a queen. I'm not a royalist at all, by the way. Did you, you want know. to be a queen or do you want to be a king? I don't want to be either. I can just see you, King Mark. No, 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 no. So, like, if if there's anyone in history, yes, that you in that really in, what, you really the camera, um, Henry inspired by, who would you say? Inspired by? Yeah, history, historic figure. No one. Nobody. No, I'm not that. I don't really think like that. Yeah. Um, I, on the top of my head, I can't think of anyone to be honest with you. But people I th- oh, I, I admire. Yeah. But no one I, I want to be like. You know, mm-hmm. I'm me. I'm unique. There's never been another Wendy. There's the never been another Mark. The unique Mark English. Yeah. That's a good one. That is a good one. I do know people that yeah. use that in their name. I think we will do a podcast about the law of attraction, actually, if you're up for it. I think, yes. I think it's, it's a huge subject. We've only, I've only touched on it due to the fact that they're people that I admire. Mm. Um, if people do know who Dr. Joe Dispenza is, do let us know. Who, and please let us know in the comments section who inspires you or exactly. who you look up to. Yeah, we've had some great feedback. Whether it's comments. whether it's mentor, whether it's inspiration, whether it's a historical figure, what what is it about them that inspires you mm. and and has, you know made you look at them differently? Because everyone can be in the public eye, but if they don't do anything for inspiration, then they're just. They're just there. Because Wendy and I were talking, actually, what we're going to do is have a little video, which won't be a pod... Well, it'll be a little podcast, won't be a video on, on my YouTube mm-hmm. channel, of us reading and reading out the comments. Yes. Of us reading comments. Because we've had some really good comments. Yeah. So we do read them all, Yeah, we? we do. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's quite... I think it's rude if you don't... Re- I mean, yeah. I'm, people take the time, you know, to, to write something. Yeah. I think you know, you've got to express a little bit of gratitude And there. what I love about today's uh, podcast is actually showing us how raw... Yeah. we really are yeah yeah you know this is this is us we might be talking about a subject which is important to us but at the same time it's like the dog's here the, the dog, dog yeah. you know the wine is here and the wine's Just, actually that's a very do. good point actually yeah i mean that's what i'm having um <laughs> here's a very good point do you quite like that rawness yeah does that work for you you know or do you like it sort of very intense in a studio Talking mm-hmm. we are Joe Rogan, who I love, by the way. Mm-hmm. Um, do you listen to Joe Rogan? I have talk? Yeah. from time to I think time, some yeah. of the guests down on there is um, um, absolutely astounding. Uh, who else do I listen to? Actually, who else do I listen to on podcasts? Russell Brand, I like his one. Yeah, I listen yeah. to Russell. Joe Rogan, yeah. uh, Jordan Peterson, although some of his, he's so smart it goes over my head most of the things he says. Um, and Rob Brydon's podcast. I like Rob Brydon's mm-hmm. podcast. He has some great guests on there. I listened to David Tennant's, actually, because he had a podcast They were fantastic. Really, really good. enjoyed Yeah. That. Really good. Um, I really enjoyed. Uh, he had Catherine Tate as well as one. Yeah. one and it was just so much fun. Um, but I like Russell too because Russell's quite funny. Yeah, he's. We know funny. he's making a point. I mean, you know, you know, but, twenty years ago, as a vile human being by the looks of it, you know, but yeah. he was off the road. But I, I, I find him. I can't admit I find him a little bit inspirational as well. Russell. Don't, yeah, don't don't agree with everything he says, but I agree with eighty percent of the time. The, the film he made, as in. Um, Forgetting Sarah Marshall. Yeah. Did you ever see him? No, I've seen clips. He is hilarious because mm. he's playing himself basically. Yeah. But he's he's another one. You know, he's he's got through a real dark times in yeah. his life and come out the other side. Mm. And now, you know, he's like he's been clean what 15, 16 yeah. years now. Yeah. yeah. He's a massive animal lover too, yeah. which he, he you know he talks about when his cat dies because that cat was very very important to him. Um, I can't remember the name of it, but he he put it on his podcast and everything. When the cat went, he was how he was asking people, "What when you lose animals? How does oh, that make well, you feel?" The, it's hard, they're, as you know, they're part of the family. They are. they are part of the family. It's 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 tough. And today they've really been, you know, Henry's been the real star of the show, hasn't he? Yeah. So yeah, um, we'll wrap this one up. I think yeah. a little bit of a shorter one than we've done in the past. Only because it's so hot. Yeah, it's really, it's, and we haven't got really, the fans on. In it's there. so hot, and it doesn't help when you're sitting next to this one. You know, oh, thank you, keep darling. darling. Thank you, darling. Uh, oh. um, but yeah, uh, let us know who inspires you. I'd be really interested to know. Yeah. That should be uh, up for debate. Also, we'll start reading out some of these comments um, uh, on, on a separate video. I yes, think. we will go over them. Yeah, I'll bring my laptop. Oh, you've got a computer. Well, we'll bring your laptop and you've got a computer in. We have, or we could just use the phone. Or just use the phone. Exactly, you see. Um, also, we're going to do a live show very soon. Yep. On a Sunday night. A Sunday night good for you? Um, it's fine, yeah. yeah. A lot of people have actually asked us about doing yeah. a live, haven't we? Yeah. Um, the Windy and Mark show. Yeah, so we'll do that very soon. 
We might do it next time. We'll see. Yeah. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Um, but yeah, yeah, we're going to do a live show maybe once. And a month. maybe can we? Oh, sorry. Maybe can we? Can we bring people on? To yeah. Chat with us. That would be really cool. Yeah. Yeah. Really if cool. I get, if I use live stream. Yeah. Uh, is it live stream that I used before? Um, you can invite guests in. Okay. So yeah, we can do that. Okay. We could to use, Good one. So you do it on your computer. You could be joining us. Yeah. So thanks very much for joining us on this Strangely Thank Us you. podcast at 004. Strangely Us. Yeah, stay, and uh, we'll see you, do, do subscribe. see you on the next one. Yeah, thank you very much and see you later. Bye.